For all of you who listen to Mac East Second Floor Studios presents Submersion and own an Android device, do me a favor. Go to the Google Play Store and download the Podcast Republic app. It's a fantastic app that allows you to get all of your favorite podcasts directly on your Android device. I use the app and I love it. I can search for the podcasts I want to listen to, select them as favorites, and have them all just a click away. Make sure to set Mackie's Second Floor Studios as a favorite so you don't miss any of our new episodes. Again, the app is the Podcast Republic app, available on Android devices. Episode 37. Woo! And is it really episode 37? 37. Wow. That seems way too many episodes. But sure. I don't know who's listening at this point, but thank wow. you. Wow. Uh, we only have one absent member tonight, because you may hear a super sexy, familiar voice. Brahm. And Zach. <laughs> hey, guys. <laughs> oh. No. It's been a while. I, did, I forgot what a sent voice on the It's terrible. Sweet vocal chocolate. <laughs> chocolate right. throat. Vocal <laughs> chocolate. <laughs> vocal chocolate. <laughs> Zach just said. <laughs> next gaming name. Vocal chocolate. <laughs> we are starting off hot. Uh, here we are. <laughs> Zach said <Green>. chocolatey throat. <laughs> Time, 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 time. <laughs> oh man, we've been yeah, it's been getting quicker and quicker. <laughs> what, what, what's Zach going? been up to? Yeah, what have you been up to? Um, I'll give you a quick rundown. Which okay, we're recording, so I can't talk about my job too much. But there was Not a lot, and when I say a lot, I mean a lot of um, a lot of stuff that went down at work, and I'm happy to talk to you guys about that off the podcast. Mm. Um, so that was crazy. You're on the Senate then, Judiciary Committee, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then just wedding stuff I, up to Cleveland, c- toying a couple places, my fiance and I, but we booked a place. All that's taken care of now. And, um, Brown Stadium, big wedding. Yep. You know, it was cheap, about 10 bucks to rent. So, <laughs> wow. But wait till they catch the. Uh, Catch fire and get on that winning streak. You should have had it today. I <laughs> almost thought they were going to tie again today. <laughs> I was I was really hoping. There's three different games in the NFL uh, uh, games today where I thought they were going to be ties. I was like, please be a tie. Oh, please be a tie. Oh, please be a tie. Oh, each time. <sighs> <sighs> so anyways, <laughs> you're all set for your wedding. Yeah. You, you are working on a, another upcoming podcast correct i am i am it'll be under our mac east second floor studios production um a little should i give like a little like a teaser oh tease away my friend i I guess you could think of it as a uh a look back on on a a certain wallabies modern life wow oh Oh, i can get steve Irwin, all that (laughs) see he gets it Sure. <laughs> but uh yes, Kyle, we are uh Rip. He's gonna be the co-host of it. Has he been has he ever sent in any questions? Rip Torn? No, Rip Torn, Rip Torn yeah, has Rip not Torn. sent any questions okay. in. Well he's he's gonna be he's a good sport about it, so Yeah. Well that's good. So All that right. should be um I think we've got four episodes done. We're gonna wow. we're gonna launch when we get six. Or I mean okay. ten. So we need six oh. more. Oh, so I was well, going to say, wow, fire. man, it's going to be really quick. Yeah, yeah but looking... we should knock these out quick. The episodes are going to be about 25, 30 minutes each. So simple. So people who can't stand ours because they are really effing long, be excited <laughs> for those. Exactly. Yeah. Or because we just ramble about for most of the time. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we do. <laughs> Speaking of. What began as an innocent conversation among friends would soon spiral out of control and later be referred to by future generations as the eighth wonder of the modern world. Mac East Second Floor Studios takes you on the journey of your lifetime as your captains, Alex the Mustard Man, the artist formerly known as Brom, Jamie the Brain, Kyle L. Capitan, and Zach the Backbone present Submersion. Yeah, let's get into this. This is the third week. Yes. No, third is week. It? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. already. Mm-hmm. Third week. Yes. We only got third more, week yeah. of back to back World War Champs WW two movies. That's right. <laughs> nice. There we go. That's our eagle. Oh, say can. <laughs> <laughs> 
Yeah, and what do, what do we watch this week? What you we guys, got? you two, you fight between you two. On who gets to say it. Yeah. Torpedo run. Oh, wow, it was straight. It wasn't even a joke. Because <laughs> he could have went a bunch of different ways with it, probably. Could have. Yeah, it's a little well, overplayed. Yes. I was thinking about saying, you know, we got uh, a couple of best friends serving their country in the military. <laughs> Top Gun. <laughs> <All right. laughs> this is almost like Top Gun. I was saying T-Run. Top oh, T-Gun. Oh, yes. Yeah, Torpedo Run. Top Gun. I was trying to do but something yes. like Top Torpedo Gun or something like that. Yeah, I was, I was workshopping gun. it, but. So I really screwed up. Sorry, guys. <laughs> <laughs> it's all right. We'll forgive you. Yeah. Because we rusty. can't scare you. We don't want to scare you away. Uh, <laughs> so this is Torpedo Run from 1958, written by Richard Sale and William Wister Haynes, directed by Joseph Pevney. And I have some facts about him in the trivia. Do you? I can't mm-hmm. wait. It stars Glenn Ford as Lieutenant Commander Barney Doyle. You may know him as the Canadian actor. From Superman, Pocket of Miracles, and 310 to Yuma. We've also seen him in one of our submarine films. Which one was he in? He was the president in Virus. Oh, shoot. He was. Japanese film months. And another American superstar, Ernest Borgnine. That's right. Lieutenant Archer Archie Sloan from Ice Station Zebra, Neptune Factor. Straight up. And Best Actor. Won an Oscar for Marty. This movie was also nominated for an Oscar for the best special effects. Yep. So it was very well regarded, I think more in retrospect than at the time. But uh, yeah, I feel like I've I heard of this as being kind of a bigger one of the uh, submarine films that uh, people talk about. So I was excited for it. And we'll see how I thought about it at the end when I get Ooh. my rating. Not going not gonna to spoil it here. But yeah, so we open... And it's 1942 in the South Pacific, as the words on the screen tell us. And Barney Doyle is the commander of the Greyfish, a uh, submarine that's kind of hunting for this, uh, uh, whatever, a, a battleship, a Japanese battleship called the Shinaru, which was, they said it led the attack on Pearl Harbor, which is not real. I mean, there wasn't just yeah, one ship. That, yeah, it's, it's yeah. Fi- fictional. So it didn't actually exist. It did not lead the attack on Pearl Harbor or anything like that. But, and there was, there was really six battleships that were part of Pearl Harbor in reality. Mm-hmm. But anyways, he's seems to be, he's like Mopey McMoperson. Like it's basically like the story of like a Mopey ca- sub captain. Cause he's like, whatever. Muh. And everyone's like, Oh man, they're all like kind of on, walking on eggshells a little bit. Cause he's all like mopey and they're like, Oh, has anyone heard? Has anyone heard yet? And you're like, what, 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 what are we talking about? What, what have we heard about? And it turns out they've been waiting for a message about his daughter and wife who he's concerned cause they were in Manila, the Philippines when, um, the Japanese invaded. And but so, don't worry before they even get to this, what do they do immediately? They just blow up a tanker. Yeah. So they light it. Ah! Yeah, so he's basically, he's like super mopey, even though they're lighting up stuff. Normally when we see these scenes where they totally destroy a tanker or something, Mm -hmm. everyone's like, yeah, and that's why they're kind of (laughs) like- Just like that. Yeah, but this is why it seems like they're, he's mopey and they're on eggshells because like that doesn't happen at all. He kind of just is like, okay, and like leaves. And then quickly he's like, are you going to send off the report? Cool, heard anything? And they're like, no, still waiting. And he's like, all right. (laughs) <laughs> and then he goes to his room and Archie, his best friend, uh, Ernest Borgnine, maybe more than best friends. We're not really sure. Like super yeah. bros, like <laughs> oh, extra bros. Dude, these guys. Definitely. This is, it is the, a bromance. The original bromance. Yeah, they are bestest, a bestest of friends. And me and Kyle it's can great. only hope to achieve what Archie and what's his name? <laughs> Barney, Barney. Uh, were able to achieve. Archie and Barney. You'd be Archie. I'd be Mopey McMoperson, I think. Probably. Yeah. I'd be all like mopey and you'd be like, come on. Yeah, I'm Kyle. <laughs> yeah. I'm just a party animal. And you turn your uh, baseball cap backwards and you hop on your skateboard and I'd be like, oh man, that Kyle. <laughs> oh, there goes Kyle again. And you'd be like, let's get some coffee. Let's get some cups of coffee. <laughs> and I'd be like, cool. Why are we always drinking coffee? He's I like, don't know, but did you want to have more coffee? <laughs> yeah, he's super caffeinated. Sure. And he's doing great. Because <laughs> that's what they do. They are constantly getting coffee. <laughs> On the sub. In Even, quotation uh, marks. Barney. Oh, sorry. What are you saying, Brom? Uh, I said they're getting coffee in quotation marks. Yeah. There literally, scenes would just end with them being like, you want some you want, coffee? You want some and coffee? Like, <laughs> and they would. Like that's like coffee. the only time Barney is like happy is when yeah. Archie when he's getting uh, coffee offers some coffee. Archie. Yeah. He's like, oh, what's- Very, what is, very What bizarre. is coffee? And I was going to say, like, we never actually see them drink coffee, but then there is a scene later where there they is, do see them yeah. drink coffee together. Yeah. One. And he's like, oh- 
copy. But there was wonder- even uh, there was even a scene where <laughs> oh, so we get word yeah. about Barney's family, right? So the next thing we get we get word they 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 get this message from the Swedish army or someone some some Swedish group. Uh, that kind of alerts them that they ever they were saved, they're alive, and they're part of they're in this like internment camp, and they're basically saying like it's the safest place to be in war. They're totally safe, and as well as can be because you know they're not going to be attacked. It's like an internment camp for POWs, so everything's mm-hmm. good to go. Even then, like the commander or the admiral is like, this is a little shady. Why they are we finding out now? Yeah, it seems so late, and why would we only find out now? And it seems so convenient that we would all of a sudden know this information. Um, when he's kind of out there, and we have to trans transmit it to him. Like this seems right. weird. They never do that. Do anything by accident. There must be a reason why. Mm-hmm. And almost immediately, we find the reason why because he, he's super happy about this, he and is. they're ready to go. And like, because before he even found out about this, you, he was even getting mad with our boy Archie, yeah. aka Board Nine. No reason. He had some. He had some net in his room. Oh yeah. He's like, he goes and he man. screams at him. Yeah. And then they're like, "Bro!" He's like, "Bro, take that net down." He's like, "Bro, I'm not going to do it." Right. And then. He's like, hey, dude, sorry. You want to get some coffee? Yeah, he's got to do it more politely. <laughs> okay. <All> right. <laughs> yeah, more politely, because like when you had that net up in this podcast studio, I was like, take that fucking net down. And you were like, thanks for telling me politely. And mm-hmm. you took it down. Well, I said, you need to say please. And I said, take that fucking net down, please. I said, fine. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Not happy about it. I'll do like, it. Why did I have this up? What does this not even mean? Uh, but yeah, that mean that net means actually a lot to him because- when they were, they have all these flashbacks to him and his family. Mm-hmm. And back then feeling. when you got a wife, you actually netted her. Yes. So yeah. you caught your wife in a net. So that was his And oh, that's how you knew. Oh. Yeah. yeah. But also, <laughs> <laughs> that was totally true what he just said. But also, uh, we have a flashback to when they were in the Philippines and having a birthday party for his daughter. And- it was a little confusing, was it? This was clearly right before Pearl Harbor, because later they, they get word that Pearl Harbor happened. Mm-hmm. But he's also like, in the middle of the birthday party, he's like, we got to go back to the base. And his wife is like, what do you even mean? He's like, we got to like kill the Shinaru. So they already knew about this boat before Pearl Harbor, before it led the attack on Pearl Harbor. Mm-hmm. They were already kind of preparing for it. But they're like, oh, don't, you're just doing simulations. It's not a big deal. You don't, you don't have to go do simulations like during your daughter's birthday party, we're, we're going fishing. And he's like, okay. And that's when the net comes out and it's like, and you can use the net and make sure when you actually sink the Shinaru that you get a piece of it in this net for me. And Ooh. he's like, okay, can that's a can do. And then they get the call about Pearl Harbor. Right. And he's he also says at this point, like, promise me you'll get out of here. You, I need you to get out of here. Like now the Japanese are going to start attacking. I just have a bad feeling about this. And she's basically like, I was born and raised in Manila, the Philippines. Like, you know, this is my home. This is where I want to build a home with you. This is where we live. Like, this is where my daughter was born. Like, I don't want to leave. I know this island at the back of my hand. I'll run up to the hills. I'll be fine. Which isn't <laughs> Spoiler, true. she's not No, fine. no. It turned she out to be not, not true. So she's in this in like internment camp. And then she he then gets word that, yes, the Shinaru's on the move and they're going to be attacking the Shinaru. But also, <laughs> they decided to, like dicks, pile all these POWs onto a boat. And have it like protect the Shinar. So, yes. Like, so what they're doing is it, they're running a uh, what they refer to as a screen. So they're going to yeah. have the Shinaru back behind, probably a, you would assume close to shoreline. So it's kind of defended. And then the transport ship with POWs will be running alongside it. Yeah. So you wouldn't think you'd want to fire at that. B- B- spoiler alert, he died. Anyways. <laughs> <laughs> spoiler alert, uh, you actually, he, well, he ended up doing it. But, uh, yes. so yeah, they're, they're, they're trailing the Shinaru. And he's, again, Mopey McMoperson. Because, yeah, I mean, it, let's let's be honest. He has been dealt a pretty bad gr- bunch of cards at this point. Um, so maybe he has well, a he right. He doesn't to, care. He's, he has a right he's to be He's cold-blooded, Mopey. man. Yeah. So he's like, okay, I got I to gotta kill this thing. And they got these POWs on there. And, like, Archie is like. Come on, man! Like, oh. <laughs> like, dude, that's that's screwed up. Yeah, when it comes down to it, maybe I should fire these like torpedoes, so you don't have to live with that guilt your entire life. And he's like, "I'm the fucking captain." When you're when you're sitting in this captain seat, like you can do what you want. Like you you don't know what it is. Like I gotta I would command this boat. And so, but captain, I know how to do it. Yeah, I've well, had every job on these boats. Right. Yeah. So part of his character, Archie's character, is that he is literally moved up from like a 
random, almost like an intern, yeah. yes. uh, like apprentice sub, submariner, and then all the way up through. So he can do like all the jobs because he's done every job, mm -hmm. moving his way up. At one point, he even like mans the sonar equipment because like clearly he's done that job before. He knows it, man. Yeah, so he knows all that stuff. But yeah, so they, the Shinar is there and he's like, I'm going to be firing this. Don't worry about it. And they get six torpedoes and then the POW... <laughs> boat starts running in front of it and i was sitting there and I, I was actually really engaged at this point i'm like he's not gonna do it right like there's no fucking way he's just like murders his family <laughs> that can't possibly be what happens there's and no that's way. like okay so we're not gonna do six we'll do how many can, can i do two and the guy's like ew i'm not so sure about that it's like what about one he's like you can do one but like two you're probably gonna hit that transport Oh, I'm going to do two. Yeah. And they're like, and Archie's like, for the love of God, please do not do this. And he's like, he does it himself. He like fires the things. Oh, like, yeah. The captain just runs over there and does it. And he shoots off two. And they're like, okay, what happened? And the first one misses. And everyone's like, oh, shit. And then the second one's like, <laughs> okay, if it hits in the next two seconds, then it, you hit like your wife and children. And it, But if it hits in 10 seconds, then it blows. <laughs> As he's like saying it, it's like, oh, shit. He's like, well, maybe it didn't happen. And the guy's like, no, it it definitely blew up that POW boat. Oh, yeah. Uh, they, that's uh, not going to twist it. He killed his family. Everyone knows this, right? Everyone knows he killed his family right now, right? And even the sonar guy, he, he's he's listening. He said, oh, my gosh. Yeah. She's breaking up. Water is rushing in. Yeah. And the bulkheads are breaking. Yeah. And you can tell he's just like, damn it. Now, in, in, a, in a usual movie, what would you think would have happened after this? Like later in the movie. Later in the movie, yeah. uh, they yeah. they probably would have showed up again. Oh, we were rescued by some other boat. His wife and kids. Sure, or yep. or that it was all a ruse by the Japanese to try to protect the Shinaro, right. and that like that they, they were never on, on the boat. Yeah, they were always in the internment camp, and now mm -hmm. they had been released, and they yeah. were like there. No spoiler alert. He actually just kills his family at this point. This is like a, the, the crux of the movie is this guy has killed his family. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, dude. completely and now it's like, surprised me. I know. Oh, literally everybody in the room <laughs> said, don't do this. Yeah. We're going to smoke that tanker. I thought, well, maybe he's got some weird bad blood with history with his wife that we don't see. <laughs> he's like, all right, now's my chance. You I'm just following orders. You, don't, you do not Fire know away. what a bitch my daughter could be, okay? It's like, oh, she's one and a half years old. God, my man. <laughs> uh, no, but like, I, I couldn't, I, it was totally uncomfortable. Then, then at that point- they're like, you're not going to tell anyone that I'm like mentally breaking down, right? Because I might lose my command. And I wanted to be like, you should, oh my God. Like, <laughs> get behind a desk, my man. Like, you can't handle the submarine now. Because even no. then, they're, they're ordered back to Pearl Harbor. They're like, you just killed your wife and kid. Yeah. Well, they, so, did, they did get a little screwed up here because yeah. – the uh, there were other destroyers that were running with the Shinaru, mm -hmm. and they turned and they immediately started depth charging oh, sure, yeah. the crap out of the grayfish, and we find out that our captain Barney was knocked unconscious for three days. Oh, uh, this is wasn't it three days later? No, this I think he got knocked out here and then they returned the movie, to base. Uh, that's pretty. It's, it's later in the movie, so he oh. gets knocked unconscious after they go into into uh, the Tokyo harbor. Bay. Tokyo Bay, yeah. Mm. So at this point, he's gotcha. just, they, 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 but you're right. They do get attacked at this point. They dive away from it. And then when they go back up, they see all the survivors of the ship kind of up there. And they're like, can we rescue anyone? And there's all, they're all waiting for them. Like basically they're using them as a trap at that point too. Oh, they even show the people floating on debris yeah. in the periscope. Yeah. Uh, and they're like, we can't. And so they, they kind of like float away and they, they get a report from Pearl Harbor basically be like, come back. And he's like, wait, but we have like 16 torpedoes. Oh, like, that's right. We we're not going to head back. We can't head back. Like Pearl Harbor doesn't need those torpedoes. No, we need them to go and we're going to chase the Shinaru. So they, from a safe distance, they kind of follow the Shinaru and they see it go into Tokyo Bay. They've taken off our submarine nets, which is, I got to say, submarine nets, there's certain things in this world that I had no idea existed mm -hmm. before doing this podcast. Submarine oh, nets, all yeah. kinds of stuff where I'm like, now I'm just like, yeah, obviously, submarine nets. <laughs> well, of course there's going to be a submarine <laughs> net there. And so they they totally fuck up a submarine tugboat. <laughs> it's a tiny boat. It's, it's great. It's little... <laughs> just smoke it. <laughs> Blow it smithereens as it's closing the gate, closing the net, and they just kind of slip in before a new tugboat can come out. But then they get sealed in, so they're, they are able to close it, and they're inside there, and they start getting chased because obviously everyone... <laughs> They blew up a tugboat. Everyone knows they're in there. Right. And there's this big minefield. So they start like kind of going through the minefield very slowly. This was a great minefield it, really scene. Really good, yeah. In most of the movies we've seen, whenever they enter a minefield, they just 
they we just kind of see it from the side and they pick a line yeah. and they go. This they actually or, had to turn and maneuver around different Or they lines. send out a mini submarine to get totally blown up by one of the mines. <laughs> right. Yeah, one of those things. That was like one too. of the options. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, oh, we got the mini sub, blow it up, get yeah. it out of here. Hey, young kid that I know that I'm personally like <laughs> yeah. I know your father or something. Get your father and I used to play baseball together. Go up there and blow up. Uh, and so, yeah, no, so they go through there. It's actually really great. Like, at one point, they kind of go along, and you can see the mines start to head towards. They get oh, caught on the line, yes. and the mine's coming down. You can really see how the mines worked at this in this, like, area yeah. or whatever. Like, not only is it going to hit something uh, on the surface, but if you're underneath, you can snag one of the lines. The mine will come down and blow up and, mm-hmm. and destroy the submarine. And it gets really, really close, and then they back up. And, you know, unhitch it and then keep on going. And they're able to get through the minefield. The thing that's chasing them blows up because it can't, you know, it doesn't, you know, it, it takes the risk of going into the minefield and it doesn't pay off for them. Oh, yeah. And they get close to the Shinaru and, and things are like kind of bearing down on them. Like there's people going to attack and they're, oh, and they're like, oh, we got a, we got a direct line again. And once again, they get a screen. Like in the last moment, a boat oh, like, out of nowhere. Like, oh, boop. <laughs> boop. So they did, <laughs> they did multiple times in this movie reference torpedoes as fish which yeah. I am all about. But yeah, they fire that torpedo and literally out of nowhere, you couldn't even see it in the periscope, yeah. another destroyer just pops up <laughs> and takes the blow. And I, could, I guess this you're is like, something that happened. How fast was that thing going? <laughs> and also imagine being like on that boat where you're like, yeah. oh shit, we got to protect this bigger boat. And you're like, so we mean nothing? Like, oh, God damn it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm going to fucking, should I just jump off the boat now? Like I'm right. confused. No, dude, you go down with that boat. God damn it. Um, but yeah, so they, they, they kind of like run away. They run into the minefield. They're getting depth charged again. Yeah. And they're basically like the, there's a British guy testing out some new equipment on there. And they're like, oh, when we went into a minefield, uh, when we were getting chased by U-boats one time, we destroyed some mines and it, they thought we had been destroyed and it kind of helped. So they shoot off some torpedoes and they destroy some of the mines. They've actually kind of like wasted a lot. Of, I didn't count the torpedoes, but at this point they've used a lot of their torpedoes. They shot right. off like six and then they shot off two more to destroy some mines. And then as they're heading out, so they, they kind of distract the uh the boat that's chasing them by blowing up these mines and they come out the other side and the net is still there or closed and so they shoot a hole into that with torpedoes as three well. torpedoes which there. i didn't know was a thing either like is it just, though i don't know is i don't it? even know yeah but they but they do blow a perfectly round hole and they just go perfectly the through it yeah Whoop. And they we'll just slip right get out. There. And this is where he Aww. basically like cl- collapses. He like goes down and he's like, oh, I'm like tired or something. And like <laughs> goes down into his bunk and goes into the bed and basically f- apparently just falls asleep for three days. His like nightmares and like sleeping. And he's hallucinating. He's re- recalling some of his like stuff with his wife. So he's recalling their the date when they decided to get married, where apparently him and Archie would go on dates with her. And like he, Archie would be like the well, chaperone. This is when they were first together. Yeah. And the way I see it is Archie knew the wife and then he kind of set them up. No, I think it was, I think he was using Archie as like a chaperone. So everything was, was like he? above board. Like oh, like okay. an old school type thing. Yeah. But, but yeah. he's been there since the beginning because they have the tightest bromance of all bromances. Yeah. It's basically like, you're not marrying my bro unless my bro is here and it's like approves. Mm-hmm. And now she apparently is like got into that bromance too. Cause during this dinner where they've decided to get married. Oh, cause she's tight with Archie. Oh yeah. Archie's gone away for like 30, what do you say? 39 minutes or something, <laughs> something. <laughs> to, in order to, con- so that she can convince him to get married. Cause she and wants to have babies. She wants to have babies now. Stat. Mm-hmm. Immediately. She and doesn't care if there's war going on. Nope. She said, I want a little clone of you or I want something a, like that. I want a clone of you. And certainly there's no way that this will end disastrously where you end up killing us in some way. Like a 0% <laughs> chance. Actually, a really, really low percent chance that you have to kill us in some crazy circumstance. So if I was on a POW ship, would you ever fire a torpedo at me? Oh, no, honey. I would never He's like, do that. That seems like a really strange question, and I need a little more context. But I'd say safely no at this point. <laughs> but talk to me in two years. Yeah. And things may change, depending on context, just yeah. to be aware. So she's like, oh, good enough for me. <laughs> She should have walked yeah. away. It's like during the vows, it's like, and I do s- you know, swear that I will never blow you up in some crazy <laughs> ruse of some torpedoes. I'm not sure how this got into my vows, but <laughs> sure. Uh, so yeah, so he's hallucinating. He recalls back to that. They decide to get married. And this whole time, Archie's kind of watching him like concerned because this is like a death knell for his career. You can't, apparently you can't fall unconscious for three days now and still command a submarine, which seems Seriously? ridiculous. Right, dude. You got to sleep. I fell asleep for most of the, I mean, I haven't, I just woke up. I fell asleep on Thursday and I woke up right now to record. Yeah. 
And you look very fresh uh, yeah. and ready to roll. I do that maybe every three weeks or so, just you, to really reset. To. People wonder where I am. Mm-hmm. My family, usually. It makes but, your skin look great, though. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yep. Just normal life things. So I don't understand what was such a big deal for this guy to fall asleep <laughs> for three days. <laughs> Anyways, Archie is keeping everybody away from him. And he's like- Even the doctor. Yeah. He's like, you get away from my boy. The doctor says- why don't you go smoke up top? He just needs some. All right, I'll go smoke one. <laughs> it's like he just hasn't had enough fucking coffee, okay? <laughs> he's asleep because he hasn't had enough coffee. He needs his coffee. And he's like throwing it on his face. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> just wait. Just wake up, bud. Just he, one more he's coffee. He's always wanted coffee. Um, anyways. Yeah. So. I, mean, I, I just want to be clear. He should definitely lose his command. He's like, you're not going to tell them, right? And I'm mm-hmm. like, Archie, you got to tell them. <laughs> like, you got to tell Central Command. This guy's yeah. a crazy person who's clearly went through a very traumatic event in his life <laughs> that's causing him to act erratically and fall unconscious for m- numerous days at a time. Yeah. But, but anyways, when he comes to him and Archie are up top yeah. on the their top side, and there's even a couple guys up there on the uh, sail with them, and he orders them to go get coffee. And that's the fourth time now in the movie that we've had a coffee reference. Yeah. Well, it's because he was so tired. Yeah. Oh, man. I feel like I've been asleep for days and I just can't get out of this fog. So, yeah, they finally get to Pearl Harbor. At this point, it's the only, actually, I, I believe this was the only scene with a real submarine in it where they actually are on a submarine that's coming into port and they, they come off and they're basically like, they got a couple holes in them. That's why they had to come back during the depth charging and stuff. They got damaged. And they're like, okay, um, we want to be first in line because I want to get back out there. And he is he is noted in the film as being the best submarine captain in the Navy. So they're like pretty interested as well, but also mm-hmm. concerned because they didn't really get much reports. It seemed like it like Archie was kind of like commanding stuff or mm-hmm. it didn't, he was, he it didn't was seem right. Reports yeah, it, seemed, it, just, it was like seeing everything. They, they were just concerned because of obviously the very traumatic event that, that Barney had gone through. And so they're like, okay, we'll put up. You've been you've been put up in a hotel. Now, this is the weirdest thing is like. Uh, so Archie and him, it's the greatest bromance in history. They're right. sharing a suite. Well, why wouldn't you? <laughs> yeah. So Archie comes out in nothing but a robe and like, some satin underwear with two cups of coffee. Hey guys. He's like, you're not sleeping very well. And <laughs> Barney's like, hey, go back to bed, bud. <laughs> Don't worry about me. Yeah. It was pretty interesting. They have like a shared bar that they're like drinking at. B- Barney's getting like shit faced, just like randomly, not sleeping at all now. I, mean, I guess he's already slept for three days straight. Right. He's like, okay, just don't tell anyone. Everything's fine. We'll get out here and we'll get the Shinaru. And and then Archie. That's the next scene. Archie's telling command. Yeah, Archie. Archie <laughs> gets called in because he's gonna get a new. He's gonna get a new submarine. This new submarine coming off, and he's fine. He's earned his spot, and they seem very happy with him. And Archie's very happy, but he's like, give him one more shot to go after the Shinaru, and they're like he's destined for a desk job. Like he can't, we can't put him back out there. And he's like, well, I'm not going to take this command unless I want to do one more time with my boy, with my bro to get the Shinaru. And they're like, really? Like you won't take the command unless you do this. And he's like, yes. And they're like, okay, one more shot. Barney will go out there. Big mistake. Cause <laughs> smash got to them on there. And Barney is a fucking crazy person. Oh point. dude, everything is falling apart between them in oh one God. scene. Barney is so pissed yeah. at Archie because he talked to command because they literally called him in, offered him a promotion that he said, hold on, I don't want to do that right now because I'm going to go help my boy. Yeah. <laughs> Barney doesn't care. He's like, you piece of shit. Yeah. You you are a piece of shit. Can't believe you stabbed me in the back. You we're told ne- on me? We're never going to have coffee again. And Archie's like, no. <laughs> Not <laughs> the one thing I love. That and smoking. I can smoke still, right? Um, no. And so they're partnered with another submarine, the Bluefin, and they're heading out. And he's like, and you see what happened? We got this shit assignment oh it was this was really funny to like me you got the shit assignment because you talked to them like we're gonna we're not they're even going close to scenario they're going to kishka harbor yeah, or kishka something harbor. Like, because who, who the fuck goes to kishka harbor yeah they're like well this naval season. command has a really good hunch yeah and he's like well that is total crap yeah, and then that's bullshit <laughs> and then the, no one goes to kishka harbor after labor day everyone knows that yeah and then you see the sonar guy as they're getting close to kishka harbor oh um I'm picking up something. It's the Shinaru. And <laughs> Archie, he just shoots this glance over. I, I loved it because it was just the biggest yeah. I told you so yeah, glance like, I've you. ever seen in any movie. Yeah. So then they're they're heading towards like attacking uh, the Shinaru, which is kind of like in some, some port or whatever. Mm-hmm. And they're heading and they have this like log 
barrier that you basically stops things on the surface from getting there. But if they just dive, they'll get under it. And he's yeah. like, I don't want to, d- I don't want to dive. <laughs> I don't even know why. Why didn't he want to dive? I have no oh, idea. Oh, I think it's because they didn't necessarily know it was a log thing, right? They thought it was a bunch of ships. Oh, and then, okay. then Barney or uh, Archie being like the expert listened in and was like, no, 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 that's a log like barrier. We need to dive. And he's like, no, we're going to stick up because there's a possibility that this is the, the ship that we want. And then at the last we're moment, they, there. they clearly realize that it's going to be the log thing. He's like, oh shit, dive. And then and they totally smoke the sail, almost roll the whole sub on its side. They destroy and- their periscope. They destroy their radio. They destroy or their yeah their their uh, radar. They still have sonar, but that's it. And the mm-hmm. the thing is damaged. Like it's almost like sinking at this point. Oh yeah, and the captain is just thrown right into a wall. Breaks his arm. Like he's clearly should not be in command. Archie needs to take over the ship. It should have been a mutiny at this point, but. Unlike those fake movies where mutinies happy, happen, this is the Navy and the U.S. Navy, and they were like, no way. There's no way he takes over. Like, that's right. not how it would work. He would still be the captain. And, of course, he st- continues to be the captain. And they go – they have one more shot, kind of. I mean, they're getting – what are they at this point? Getting, like, depth charge to shit? Oh, no, that's after. Well, yeah. yeah well, they, so they were, they were just and, in a skirmish, but it's also uh, – they only have sonar, I think. Yeah. And captain wants they to take one a shot. sound yeah. shot. They got one shot, yeah. Archie says – you know that there's a one in eight chance that that works. And Captain says, well, of course I know that. And Archie just shoots back. All right, I just want to make sure I know what the plan is, what the plan is, in case you pass out. Yeah. Oh, like, oh you did not fucking burn, baby. You got him. He's dropping the spice. Yes. And so he uh, he's like, oh, I'm going to. And so they set it all up. And then at the last moment, Barney's like, you, you know what, bud? You know, bro? You take the shot. And Archie's like, wait, what? You want me to do it? And he's like, yeah, do it. And so takes the shot. They're like, okay, did you hear anything? And of course, as the viewer, we get to see the Shinaru just go up in flames. Oh, totally blown fabulous. Up. They don't know this at all because they don't have a periscope because uh, Barney destroyed it um, <laughs> while he did his ill-advised move earlier. <laughs> right. They can't check anything. And also now they're, they're going to get like getting depth, char- depth charged like uh, crazy. Oh, yeah, because there were other people just bearing yeah. down on them. And they, I mean, at this point I was like, if the depth charge don't destroy them, there's they should just give up depth charging ever. Because they, they they're lighting them up. So many depth charges, like all over the place. Yes. And of course I was, you know, correct. They- Destroy the submarine. They flood one half of the submarine almost completely. Mm-hmm. The four uh, torpedo room and then the main area, the main captain area, the only ones that are left. Everyone's crowded in there and they're on the bottom of the uh, ocean or whatever. They hear up above the bluefin destroys the boat, the other boat that was depth charging. Yep. So they're pretty much safe and they can get rescued. But they need to get out of the submarine. So they use what we call mumps and lungs and they all grab these mumps and lungs and they are just things that can get charged with oxygen and, and just temporarily you can kind of exchange CO2 with this oxygen by using this like bag that you put over your face. Mm-hmm. So it's like, it does not as, it wouldn't work, work as long as a scuba diving thing, but. But hopefully in a, a situation yeah, where I guess you're not thing. so deep, it gives yeah. you enough time to get all the way up to the surface. Or right. So they put up like a line and everyone starts going up in their mumps and lungs. At this point, there's, they're separated. The The four torpedo room has four people in it and then there's everyone else is in the other one and they're like telling the people in the four torpedo room to escape and they all go up in this thing super efficiently. They go, oh, mm-hmm. blah, 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 and up they go and they get rescued by the bluefin. And I was like, oh, they should probably wait for those uh, people in the computer room because I can't imagine they were as efficient as everyone with the captain and the XO. Like all the commanders are there and just like four randos are in the torpedo room. They're probably bumbling, stumbling about. And they start going and they're like, hell yeah, we uh, never got those people in the torpedo room. (laughs) (laughs) Of course you didn't. You had to wait maybe just like a couple more minutes. Yeah. They they had to do everything themselves. They had like a million people in the other one. They're probably floating around up there. They're probably still flooding. They're like, what do we do for, oh, we have to open this valve. Okay. Okay. I got it. We're telling them. Then they got up to the surface. And they're like, what the fuck? <laughs> Come on, guys. Is that Kishka Harbor? Where the fuck are we? <laughs> uh, and but so, hey, first yeah. thing they do yeah, when the uh, when our boys, Archie and Barney, get onto the sub, they're talking with the command of the Bluefin. They get offered coffee. Of course. Got yeah. to. Why not? Yeah. And then they also get the opportunity to look through the periscope to see if the Shinaru got lit up. And it did. And it's exploding and f- sinking and everything great's happening. And everyone's super happy. And then you can just see in his eyes, Barney just slowly realized that his family is still dead because he killed them. Mm-hmm. The end. So there we go. That's it. Yeah. <laughs> wow. <clears throat> 
He did kill his family. Yep. That never was resolved. <laughs> no. Very I abrupt. Don't know how you, no, I actually, that. you know what? I guess it was resolved just much earlier than I thought it was. Because <laughs> he just killed his family. Yeah. That was it. And that's, that's all you can That's take. the resolution. That's yeah. the end, end of the story. He killed his family. Yeah. A way out. So what did we learn? That, yeah, you can just kill your family and no one seems to mind. <laughs> as long as it's with a torpedo. Yeah, as long as it's in this very convoluted plot by the Japanese during a war, then everything's fine, apparently. Mm -hmm. I guess it should not necessarily buy the Jack. It could buy anyone you're having a war with, for the most part. Shouldn't just single out them. Right. Right. All right. Let's get into what people thought about this. So, Kyle, when you get fed up with your family, you know what to do. Yeah. A, get command of your own submarine. B, uh, reverse psychology trick your wife and family into staying in a place that is totally unsafe. Three, <laughs> wait for the enemy to use them as a bargaining chip. Four, Four. make my move. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's easy as one, two, three. Oh, Four. yes. It's yeah. really quite simple. Yes. Anyone can do it. <laughs> we do not support that. No. <laughs> no. When this happens, like twenty years from now, we have to get rid of these tapes, or else you're gonna oh. be, you're going to be in deep shit. Yes. All right. So, who wants to go first? <laughs> <laughs> no one. I think Zach should because he watched all of the film for sure. Definitely. 100%. All right. All right. All right. <laughs> I did, and um, um, that's a fact. So. This movie, Torpedo Run, you know, it's no... <laughs> <laughs> Torpedo <laughs> Run. Like <laughs> just looking at the phone. Torpedo <laughs> Run oh, is the movie. name. I, I give this four stars because th this movie was named Torpedo Run and for sure definitely had torpedoes. It's a so, movie. Not a lot was, of running. You know, it's no surprise, guys, how I usually feel about these older films. I'm not a huge fan of them. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so with that being said, with the parts that I paid more attention to while I was watching the film, it seemed entertaining. There was definitely a lot of torpedoes. There was a lot of explosions. Um, <laughs> there was coffee. and Definitely coffee. 100% coffee. Yeah. So, and then the ending with the nice little red font there at the end when it said the end, you know, it was yeah. nice. It kind of stands <laughs> out. Probably your favorite part, right? <laughs> um, let's just let's just uh, chalk this up on the old whiteboard as a as a four and a half. Wow! Wow! Okay. All righty. I would love to go last. So, Brom, what do you oh, get? Okay. Uh, well, uh, film we watched: Tor Torpedo Run. Uh, not a whole lot of exposition. Um, not a lot of character development. You're kind of thrust into the action, which of course isn't always a bad thing, but. Uh, Really, you weren't able to develop an attachment to um, really any of the characters, of course, besides our, our main two. And the whole crux of the film seemed to hinge on the fact that um, Glenn Ford, Commander Barney, uh, killed his own family. Yes. And uh, I don't know. Did we mention that during the podcast? We should we, be clear. He killed his family. We I think we I think we mentioned it. Uh, hopefully mm -hmm. we didn't gloss over that. Uh, just to reiterate, Glenn Ford, Commander Barney Doyle, uh, killed his family in this movie, and there's really no no emotional attachment to it. And you, the whole movie, you're, you're just expecting them to like get back on shore, and his family is waiting there for him, and he's completely utterly shocked, and uh, he runs, and his daughter runs into his arms, and he's got a tear in his eye, and then it says the end, and they got the old classical music. Well, none of that happened. The movie ends abruptly, mm. and. Uh, uh, just, there's just so much room there. I mean, just imagine that. I mean, your family being used as a pawn in this war, and uh, you accidentally kill them like that. <laughs> accidentally, accidentally might be a stretch. Uh, yeah, I'm not sure. We could definitely say he accidentally killed his family. <laughs> <laughs> well, whatever you want to call it, uh, very, very bizarre, uh, detached. Uh, element of the movie for me where there just could have been so much more uh, emotion felt there. Um, 
In spite of all that, the, the special effects and practical effects were incredible. The uh, Obviously, you could tell that they were able to showcase some real footage of, uh, you know, military and, and Navy drills. Um, and some of the depth charge scenes were amazing. That reminded me of the stuff that we saw in, like, uh, U-571 and, and uh, some of the more contemporary movies. So it was way ahead of its time in that regard. Uh, so from an action standpoint, you know, this is a, a good beer and wings, uh, submarine film. Uh, I'm going to give it a six. All right. Okay. You go next. You go next. I am next. This movie. I loved it. Uh, it, I, we started with action immediately, yep. just blew up a tanker. This movie has literally Everything we ever talk about except for wrenches. We've got fish. We've got smoking on the sub. We, I think even for a second, hit a miniature fire on the sub. I was we gonna say, did we have fire? We did, yeah, because someone got burned. Yeah. yeah. Because that is controls. Like, oh. Yeah. We have depth charging. We have literally everything that I'm looking for. There should have definitely wrench. there should have definitely been a mutiny too. Because oh. he Bernie should not have been in control at the end of that film. Right. You could <laughs> you could tell it was on the cusp of a mutiny. No, for sure. But it just never came to fruition. I was sitting there watching this movie and I didn't want it to end. It was going to me, it was just like so fast. And what I think somebody said, you know, good movies are never long enough, bad movies are never short enough, right? So this movie blew me away. I didn't expect this out of this movie because if you look on certain movies rated online, this isn't necessarily super high. Mm-hmm. Uh, but for me, it's an 8.5. Wow. Woo. Guys, you're showing he was getting like a little hot and bothered in here talking about this <laughs> Sounds movie. Sounds like Woo. Kyle. <laughs> Yeah, it's lucky because he's going to need some uh, hot coffee to calm down. (laughs) Yeah, somebody give me some (laughs) coffee. Some coffee and cigarettes. Yeah. I mean, it was was lucky too this time that when you climaxed, it coincided with when um, the captain went unconscious for three days. Mm -hmm. And you also went unconscious for three days out of ecstasy. And you were able to wake up and then continue the movie. (laughs) Yeah. You didn't miss anything. No. Yeah. (laughs) I have the uh, director's cut. So while he's unconscious for three days, it's in real time. Right. It's like every single moment of the summary. It's the movie you're watching. Like this movie was 63 hours long. Yeah. That's why you guys didn't like it. Yeah. Um, all right. So I, I kind of went back and forth on it because I, I do agree with Brom that there were um, a lot of aspects to it. It kind of reminded me of Up Periscope, kind of doing a lot of uh, flashbacks to try to give you some of that um, mm-hmm. character development that you hoped for. Like they just didn't, they didn't really do enough with the family to really earn them getting totally blown to smithereens. <laughs> like, because, I mean, not even halfway through the film. You didn't want it. Yeah. You're like, oh, they're gone. I don't need that. Yeah. And then, it, you know, you have this guy kind of acting erratically and stuff like that. So at times I, I was like the main character to me was in- incredibly uh, unlikable in a lot of aspects. Uh, he shouldn't have really stayed in command because he was clearly going through PTSD, like mental mm-hmm. breakdown and should have been, you know, put on a desk at that point. But yeah. everyone in the movie was like, no, 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 It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. He's our captain. He's the best. And it's like, he really, he just killed his family. <laughs> like, <laughs> that's tough. I'm not sure. That's really tough for anyone. Like he should not be in command of the yeah. submarine. So it's hard to like separate that from just like enjoying like these really exciting stuff. But it's true. The tension that was there for everything, like almost every single moment was some kind of tension. They were blowing up something or then they were going through a minefield or they things were always getting in front of their torpedoes, blowing through submarine nets, you know, hiding from death charges, like all everything we want out of a submarine film is there. It just to me, it felt a little distant, like a periscope where you just felt like off from the characters. You were a little away from the characters. It was more about the action and the um special effects and stuff like that, then maybe the, the people involved or the characters mm-hmm. that were involved. So I think I'm going to end up at a seven. I've given a lot of things sevens lately. Yeah. But I think I'm going to give this a seven as well. Seven. Yeah. All right. It, it is funny you guys talk about the, yeah. the character development, because I did even think about that during some of the scenes where they even, I think they had two scenes specifically where they had different submariners talking. Yeah. Just, yeah, the, yeah. just the guys. And, and there was like nothing. Talk- One of them was crazy, where like had nothing right. to do with anything. He's like, "Have you ever had problem with dames?" And he's like, 
Yeah, sometimes. And then they're like, ah, ha, ha, ha. I'm like, wait, was that a joke? <laughs> <laughs> and I just thought, get those guys out of here. You literally could have had only two people with speaking roles well, in this. I mean, Destination Tokyo, well, Destination Tokyo, they actually did a better job with that. But like mm-hmm. a Periscope, it was a similar one where it was right. always like, boy, what more could you want out of a submarine? We got sandwiches. And it's like, yeah. oh, a sandwich guy. <laughs> but those, <laughs> he likes sandwiches. <laughs> but they kept that stuff to literally two scenes in this. Yeah, yeah. They, yeah, they really cut it down. And they could have... I did like no scenes. I did like Archie. I do, but I I feel like that's why they ended up with things like those coffee things. Where Mm -hmm. they're like, we need something here to show that they're really good friends. They're gonna grab coffee together. What do we do when we like the screenwriters are together? Like, what do we do to show that we're good friends? We get coffee. Well, sometimes we get coffee together. That's how we know we're friends. Well, should we do that all the time? Yeah, let's write that one in. Oh, we need something for this scene. They get coffee. Like when we get coffee. It's like, oh, that's true. Oh, they're, now they're really good friends. Wow, this is writing itself. It's really good. Yeah. Uh, I thought Borgnine was great in this. Yeah, he was really, really good. I actually was surprised because when we've seen him in the other films, he's been a little bit later in his career mm-hmm. for those other ones. Uh, and I felt like it, it wasn't. He's been good. He was like a different type of character. But, Here, I could see why he was an in demand actor. Right. Like he was really you know very very good made me want to watch some of his other ones that he's neptune done. factor was just it was bad. Not, the movie yeah the movie wasn't there i really like ice station zebra i thought that was good right but he was, he was a side different. he was a little bit of side character right o- older character yeah this made me want to uh i want to watch marty now marty yeah i want to yeah. see it because yeah i thought it was really good mm-hmm. all right should i get into some trivia zach what do you think is yeah man I, I want to get my i want to have my my mind tickled okay <laughs> so, at the end, they use the mumps and lungs to escape from that submarine. They are quite rare in submarine movies. Um, one other picture that does use mumps and lungs is called Submarine D1. So, we've done Submarine X1. X1 but no, this is Submarine D1 from 1937. <laughs> Add it to the watch. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so, they use mumps and lungs in that one. That would have been, uh, been pre-World War II. Too, that's so. a Cold War movie, right? Yes, of course. Yes. In 1937, right. when they made that Cold War movie. Mm-hmm. <laughs> when the United States is in the Cold War with Canada. I'm like, eh, they got close. They were pretty, they were almost there. Um, so this was made with full cooperation of the U.S. Navy and received an Academy Award nomination for Best Visual Effects, um, partially with their uh, kind of combination of stock footage. Plus, they had um, a tank. They, they built like a submarine set in a tank. So when you were seeing them escape from mumps and lungs, that was actually from like a submarine set in a giant tank. Really? Yep. And then mix that with miniatures. And I thought in particular, they probably ended up winning that Academy Award, I think, for that mumps and lungs scene, which mm-hmm. was just a really good combination of miniatures from like the way of the sub. I'm seeing like bubbles come up when they open a hatch and then yeah. they're coming out of the hatch and stuff like that, combining all those elements into one thing. Mm-hmm. I felt like they did a really good job with. So oh, definitely. I, I guess that was probably it. But at the same time... They were criticized, because 1958, so a little bit later than some of these other ones we've seen miniatures in, Mm -hmm. they were criticized for still using what they felt like, or that some reviewers felt like were amateur miniature stuff. Oh, really? Yeah. So there's a bunch of reviews. It looks really good. There's a bunch of reviews out there kind of being like, oh, and they're using amateur miniature stuff. But then again, miniatures was a huge part of everything. Even now they still use miniatures, but like- Uh, In a very famous upcoming movie we have- they use miniatures, and I watched the behind the scenes on it, and it was very impressive. Well, like Star Wars and stuff was all just like advanced miniature work. Mm-hmm. No, it wasn't. Oh, it was that a location? Oh, wow. Okay, I did. Star know Trek that. as well. Star Trek also used also also shot in location. Mm-hmm. Yes, space. Um, yeah. So although it, yeah, so it wasn't received well at the time, um, and this is actually evidenced by the fact that when it was distributed, it was actually distributed as a double billing. So it was a two for the price of one film with a movie called Fiend Without a Face. <sighs> Scandal. So it was a horror film. I would too. Uh, no submarines in that one though. I don't think. Uh, so unless, I wouldn't watch it unless the fiend that doesn't have a face is a submarine because I don't believe submarines have faces. I'm not a submarine expert, but I don't think they have faces. Right? Um, does Bodie McBoatface have a face? Bodie yes, McBoatface. But... No, it does <laughs> not. <laughs> it doesn't. Oh, okay. <laughs> Shoot. Just in the name. It's a misnomer. Um, so it featured m- many famous actors like Ernest Borgnine and Glenn Ford. Borgnine recalled uh, only one story from the filming. So for his book is basically just every film he did with like little stories about them. Right. Neptune Factor was pretty funny. That was the one where the director was like drunk and asked him yeah. to be in the film. And he was like, sure. Yeah. Why didn't you ask me? And then he's of like in this I'll film with like this drunkard. As like the thing. So he recalled the, the story he remembered from that was on the first day of filming, Glenn Ford 
in his in in Borgnine's view wanted to show his authority over the director who is kind of like a small time director uh-huh. as like the star of the film. They sh- kept on shooting this one scene where the periscope was coming up. And he had to look through it. So just a very simple scene. Periscope comes up. He looks through it and he kept on being like, I don't like it. I don't like it. I don't like it. I don't like it over and over again. And eventually he he asked Borgnine, like, well, what do you think? And Borgnine was like, uh, I liked it the first time. And apparently Ford blew up and started cu- cursing everyone out. Really? And the producer had, he called the producer in and the producer came and he was yelling at the producer about how like, he's the star of this film. Like everything's on his shoulders. Like no one else ha- is going to be blamed for this except for him because he's the biggest name here. And so like, if he wants something done right, he wants it, he, he got to get it right. So from then on, the production was kind of like hinging on him saying like, yes, that was an okay shot and stuff like that. Really? So he's kind of an asshole, to, particularly to Borgnine, you know, just because he said like he liked yeah. the shot or whatever. And then when Borgnine went and visited him in the hospital when he was, you know, dying or whatever, um, Ford said, um, I'm so, so sorry for like how I treated you on that set. And he's oh, like, really? He said, and Borgnine said, like, after all those years later, he still remembered that, even though I had forgotten. And that's what, like, a true movie star is. Someone who, like, does that kind of stuff, but then is like, oh, shit, I shouldn't have treated him like that. Yeah. Yeah, he's like, you don't make him like that anymore. And then Ford, his son, made a, uh, wrote a book. And he said that even though uh, he, he talked a lot about the issues with the water tank, about how it was, like, super duper cold. And then with the mumps and lungs, they were, like, World War, II, World War II era mumps and lungs. So they were like at that point 18 years old or something like that. Yeah. And when he breathed in, dust particles like like kind of <laughs> would come into your lungs and everyone was coughing and stuff and panicking. Yeah. And they had this one where it actually got really dangerous where everyone started panicking and trying to get out of the thing and pulling like the tubes out of everyone's mouths and stuff like that in the process. Really? Yeah. And so oh it was like gosh. really dangerous. And, um, but he said, said it didn't really turn out the way that everyone had hoped it would the movie, but it was the movie that he would have people sending him letters and coming up to him saying that they really liked and thought was a really accurate portrayal of life on like a submarine. Hmm. Yeah. And that was Glenn Ford's son. Yeah. He was writing about that story. Right? Okay. All right. And then finally, last one, director Joseph Pevney, he started as a vo- in vaudeville as a song and dance man. And he later worked uh, as a stage actor and a nightclub entertainer. And he did a few uh, film noirs in film in the 1940s. And eventually turned his turned over to directing. And he made a few of them. This was probably his biggest one, um, Torpedo Run. Uh, he was most – he's best known now though as a television director and most prominently for Star Trek. He actually tied the most episodes directed of Star Trek um, ever in the in the history of that series. Wow. Yeah. And so he made – he directed um, episodes like Arena and Trouble with Tribbles and both of those are – you know, two of the most famous of the episodes of Star Trek he directed. With that in mind, which of these Star Trek captains would have been good in the films, in this film? So I'm going to skip over Avery Brooks and Kate Mulgrew, who both were captains in Star Trek series because no one, I don't, do you know who they are? No idea. Zach, do you know who that is? Oh, yeah, but. I'm gonna skip no, no, I don't. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but so I'm going to go to superstar, noted, I mean, famous movie star Scott Bakula. What do you think? <laughs> Scott Bakula. Of NCIS New Orleans fame. Yeah. I what I recently saw him in something. Isn't he also in something where he- Broadway. That's right. He travels I just saw through time or something? Yeah. He was in, uh, what was that called? A Quantum Leap? No. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Oh, it was- Quantum Leap. He was in a It's Always Sunny episode. Quantum Leap. Yes. Okay. Um, he has the know. look of being on a submarine. He does, but he doesn't really have the look of the the top the, the main two characters, and unfortunately, no. there's no other characters. <laughs> 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 he could have been the guy coming into the admiral. He's not old enough to be the admiral, but he could have been the guy coming in, being like, "Hey, I got a new message. Hey, who are you, Scott Bakula? <laughs> Get or, out of here!" Or he could have been the guy on the submarine, being like, "Hey, I'm having trouble with this dame. You guys ever have trouble with dames?" Like no. Scott Bakula? Huh. No, what? Because we're not you. Gosh. Okay, what about Patrick Stewart? Sir Patrick Stewart, sorry. Ooh. He could have been Sir. like uh, one of our big wigs back on dry dry. I was going to say, he's the admiral, right? Yeah. He's like the admiral being like, he's our best submariner. We got, he has a right to know, but I have a bad feeling about this. I'm Sir Patrick Stewart. Yeah, <laughs> I, think, I think he'd be good in that. Yeah. What about William Shatner? Oh. <laughs> Come on, that's right. Archie. Yeah. What? What? <laughs> no, he's Barney, right? I feel like he's Barney because Barney's kind of like a stumbling, bumbling fool who kills his own family. And I feel, I feel like that's more like a William Shatner thing. <laughs> oh, really? 
Yeah, I think so. <laughs> More of a William Shatner. But you know what? Thing. You're you're, you're in contact with I've got, got another guy who I'm thinking for Barney, and I think you'll have. <laughs> uh, but what do you mean? I'm not, I'm confused. Yeah. What are you talking about? So I I still would like him as Archie. Fine. I think that's probably going to work out with the other people I have on this list. Right. Yeah, it's Whatever. it's everybody's opinion, right? Or is there a right and wrong here? No. <laughs> <laughs> you tell us, fans. <laughs> what about Chris Pine? That is Barney. You think? Yeah, that's, that's definitely one person that could be Barney of mm-hmm. the other people that I might have on this list. Okay. But yes, I think you're, yeah, given, given what we have, yes, it would make sense that like Chris Pine is kind of like the renegade, like, I'm a hot shot. And check out my like abs, like whatever. Yeah. Don't worry about it. Unstoppable. I'm on a train, but I'm also like I'm kind of broken. Don't worry about it. <laughs> yeah. Very nice. Anyways, uh, what about Ed Harris? So Ed Harris, little known fact, he was on a, a short-lived Star Trek. It was called Star Trek: Even Deeper Space Ten. Wow. And yeah, he was uh, Captain Muscles McGee. Nemesis. So. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thank you. So Ed Harris is obviously Barney. Yeah, obviously right? Barney. Obviously Barney. Yes. Obviously and Barney. I will not make anything. He's not, not covered in grease or whatever. Yeah. He's got those big r- rippling muscles. And maybe perhaps, you know, if there was grease lying around, he mm-hmm. would fall into it. But he's not like rubbing it on himself or anything. Yeah, like maybe that. that's oh, okay. what they do for enjoyment. Other, instead of hot coffee, maybe it's like, hey, you want me to go grab that grease to make you feel better? And, yeah. And he's like, yeah, go, go get that grease. That'll make me feel better. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, bud. Why don't you grease me? <laughs> just grease me up. <laughs> and they're like slip and sliding down the hallway. It's like <laughs> in the <you> sun. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> slip and slide the memory of your family away. As he tries to shoot their torpedo, his hand slipping off the button. He's like, oh no. No. And he finally gets it going, but it's too late, and that's how he kills his family. That would be a real accident. And somebody right goes to like hit it. <laughs> the mechanism's not firing. There's so much crease <laughs> coming much out grease. of this. Muscles me Captain Muscle McGee. He's just uh, in there greasing himself up. Yeah. This, like, this is classic. starting to sound like a very adult movie. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. So and I'll, fin- I'll finish up with uh, Phantom Zone. Engage the Phantom. Phantom's engaged, sir. Because it's not very long this time. Because I've used fant- I've used uh, Torpedo Run like a huge number of times. So yeah. I used to, I used it for Ice Station Zebra. I think I skipped over it for Virus. I think I maybe veered in a different direction. But obviously, I could have used it for Virus. And I think I noted it in uh, in that during that um, Phantom Zone. But yeah, so LQ Jones is in this one. He's also in Battle of the Coral Sea. It's funny with LQ Jones too, because like at the time before watching the film, mm-hmm. he's just one of the other Submariners on it. But right. It's hard to recall. There are um, literally how small those <laughs> two people. Yeah, it was impossible to really know, know how small movie. like the roles were. But yeah, he's in that, and he's also in Battle of the Coral Sea that features Terra Shimada. And come on, guys. <laughs> At this point, if you don't know that Terra Shimada can get the Phantom, you shouldn't even be listening to the podcast. You should just stop. Definitely do not listen to the rest of this podcast <laughs> or the rest of the episodes. <laughs> so how'd you guys lose all your listeners? <laughs> <laughs> Jamie got really fired up about Teru Shimada. <laughs> yeah. Oh, as he, I couldn't as he was want to do. <laughs> All right. So it's time for Subs Worldwide. It's it's Subs 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 World World Wide 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 Wide. So there is an interesting fact with this movie. With Archie, he was named Archie in this movie after the USS Archerfish, which is a Bilal class submarine. Can I just quickly jump in? Yes. I did want to note, I forgot to mention, I spent a really long time trying to figure out what submarine was in this, like what submarine was being shown yes. before realizing that it was all stock footage except for one scene where they were like on the bridge of a submarine like randomly. Oh, okay. So then I was like, oh, you know what? That's probably why no one knows because it's just some like footage of right. whatever the Navy gave them. Like, yeah, here. So this isn't the actual submarine they're on. This is just what Archie's named after. It was the USS Archerfish, and it's Bilal class. And longtime listeners might say, well, Kyle, haven't you done the Bilal class in episode 12? And also wasn't- wasn't, (laughs) Duh, of course I did. And and also the submarine in this film was a a Gatto class, technically. Well, too bad. Yeah, too bad. So I am going to do the USS Archerfish. I'm going to dive deep into- 
That's up. I will give you a quick overview of Malau in case you forgot from, you know, 25 episodes ago, whatever. Who would forget? I don't know. And if you forgot, certainly not you me. should not be listening to this podcast and you should stop listening and not listen to any more episodes. <laughs> The views of Jamie do not reflect <laughs> the views of everyone else on this podcast. Uh, so they are diesel electric <laughs> subs. They have four diesel engines that generate 5,400 horsepower while on the surface. While submerged, they have four electric motors that generate 2,740 horsepower. They are 311 feet, nine inches oh, long. Sweet. Yes, it's the best. And on the surface, they can travel at 20.25 knots. Word. Submerged, 8.75. Oh, that sounds good. They have a submerged endurance of 48 hours, and they can go on 75-day patrols because they can travel 11,000 nautical miles. Whoa! And how deep can they dive? 400 feet. Oh, that sounds, that's pretty good. Yes. It's not so, so bad. I mean, I, I think we made fun of it. For this time frame. Yeah, for that time frame. And 11,000 11, is pretty good, too. They're almost to that 20,000 leagues. Close. They need to get to. Uh, it holds 10 officers, 70 enlisted men. For the weapons, it has 10 21-inch torpedo tubes, six in front, four in the back, one four-inch deck gun, and our favorite, Bofors, or Bofors, 40 millimeter, and the Orlikon 20 millimeter. <laughs> so, why was Archie named after the archer fish? Because this submarine is famous for sinking the largest warship ever sunk by any submarine ever, even still today. Wow. And Damn. Yeah. It even received a presidential unit uh, citation after World War II. And I think it had seven, one, seven stars. Hmm. So it was put into commission in 1943 with Lieutenant Commander George W. Keel at command. The boat underwent training in November and it was commissioned in the New England area but it traveled to Hawaii November 29th, 1943. So I'm going to go over its patrols, talk about what happened here. So the first patrol, it attacked three ships, got nothing, didn't score any kills. Second patrol, it didn't run into any Japanese targets, and it was at sea for 42 days, so it'd be kind of bored. The third patrol, it was assigned lifeguard duties <laughs> during the attacks on Iwo Jima and Ended up rescuing a downed pilot. The fourth patrol, it patrolled the waters of Hansu and scored no kills and returned after 53 days. Oh, but Kyle, when did it sink the world's largest battleship ever? Oh, maybe that was on the fifth patrol because we have a new commander, Joseph Enright. So, during this mission, the primary objective was to... Provide lifeguard support for the B-29 Super Fortress strikes against Tokyo. And it turned out that there weren't actually going to be any air raids that day. So they kind of had free reign to go about and do whatever they wanted. And it went to waters just off Tokyo Bay. And during the evening, they spotted what they thought was a tanker uh, because it was really large. But it was an aircraft carrier, and there were destroyers screening it, like we saw in the movie. Oh, wow. And so the captain knew that if he went up to attack this, because they were able to you know, discern that, okay, this is an aircraft carrier. If they surfaced, the destroyers would absolutely light them up, like they couldn't stand a chance. So they were going to hit the Shinano. Not sure if I'm saying that correctly. Probably not. Probably not. But uh, that was the large aircraft carrier. And what they wanted to do was they wanted to wait till it moved and got within a range. So this is kind of similar to what happened in the movie. Mm -hmm. And they had to wait six hours until it finally got into, you know, a position. And it even turned its broadside to them because they didn't know they were there. So they said, all right, let's light that thing up. They fired six torpedoes at a depth of only 10 feet, which is pretty shallow, and they wanted to hit it relatively high so they could sink it and give them less chance of uh, shooting underneath the boat. And afterwards, they fired and they dove down to 400 feet, which is what they could go to, to avoid depth charging. And the sonar techs, much like in the movie, picked up noises of the boat breaking down, you know, and exploding and all that for 47 minutes. Wow. So a lot of, a lot of times we've seen in these movies, the uh, submariners are talking about tonnage that they sink. 
you know, like, oh, we've sunk X amount of tons and that's so cool. This, this Shinano was 65,800 metric tons. And Ooh. like I said, still today, largest warship ever sank by a submarine. It's almost as much as I can lift. I know. <laughs> almost. Close. Uh, so it had two more patrols. The sixth one, it commanded the uh, a three-sub wolf pack consisting of the archerfish, batfish, and blackfish. Damaged an unidentified target and claimed that it sank a submarine, although that was never verified. The seventh patrol provided lifeguard services for the more super fortress strikes in Japan. And get this, it was one of 12 submarines that entered Tokyo Bay on August 31st uh, while they were waiting for the formal Japanese surrender. Wow. So this thing was even eventually recommissioned for the Korean War, but a fire broke out on it. And so they had to repair it. Then it was used for oceanographic scientific research from 1958 to 1964. And then I can't even believe they did this with a sub this famous. Yeah. In 1968, they towed it to a target position and blew it up. Jesus. <laughs> yeah. Because like, why the hell not, right? <laughs> did they ever? Do you know if they ever made a film about that? Like blowing up that ship, like a dramatic dramatization. I, don't know. I haven't. They, they uh, need haven't to. Seen. Yeah, I was trying to look it up, but then my my phone was acting all cookie. You can hear it. Yeah, it makes uh, weird with the, noises with, with the microphone. microphone. Yeah. So I know that was a little long winded, but uh, that's now, the USS Archer. I also have another question. So during that, do they ever figure out during that scenario whether any of the people on the submarine's families were on any of the screening ships? Uh, that was not included in what I found online, mm-hmm. but I'm gonna say yes. Yeah. <laughs> and so they, but they didn't actually Fact. inadvertently kill their <laughs> uh, their whole family, right? Because um, they, they avoided. They just shot the ship, right? Right. They they threaded the needle and yeah. shot the Shinano. So. <laughs> threaded <Okay>. the needle. <laughs> <laughs> Heard that before, Kyle. <laughs> <laughs> so yes, that's. Yeah, that's I don't. Right. I don't see any drama dramatizations of that. On Shoot, Wikipedia. All right, so our second sub movie can be that. The first oh, yeah. will be the one that Brom had mentioned, where the French destroyed um, what well, close to seven billion ships. <laughs> oh yeah, it I think it was the, seventy. Uh, seventy. It was either seventy-seven or seven billion. <laughs> right, somewhere, if not one of those, somewhere in between. Right. Yeah, so we'll just call it. What are we going to call it? Like Archer. Oh, I like that. Yeah, call it Archer. Mm-hmm. Or Shinano. What about art or what about what about deep threat, the archer story? Oh, Ooh, I, I like, like that. that. Yeah. Deep threat. <laughs> Keeps the door open for a future porn version, deep throat. <laughs> <laughs> Good lord. All righty. Brom. All right. You got a countdown? I do, of course. Uh also before I jump into it, tube three ready to fire, sir. Commence the countdown. Give it to me. I have a sad fact for everyone. Uh, this the uh, the maneuvering and strategy of uh, uh, moving POWs around um, by the Japanese is uh, actually based on on true. Uh, strategy. There's a term called the Japanese hell ships where they would move the prisoners of war around on these ships. And believe it or not, um, allies would uh, continuously just keep bombing the crap out of these uh, during World War II. And uh, the number is over 20,000 prisoners were killed by allies targeting ships that had their own prisoners on it. Is that why wow. they were transporting them, Ben? Uh, I can't like, find anything where they actually screen, like successfully screened, uh, like a, a warship with a prisoner ship. But uh, I, there, I mean, there probably was being used as decoys, um, and knowing that the allies would go after them and um, attack them and That's still kill savage. their own people. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Sad fact. Sad fact. Countdown this week. <laughs> A little more fun. I've got... <laughs> Wait, more fun than that? Wow, I hope so. Let's say much more fun. We got the top 10 torpedoes with the most badass names. I wow. love this already. This is great. Yeah, this is good. 
So, you know, we've talked about uh, most, you know, badass names for submarines and, you know, all these things in the past. Well, we watched Torpedo Run. So let's take a look at some of the coolest torpedoes uh, ever to be used. Uh, this is real world, nothing uh, fictitious here. These are some cool torpedoes from the world, <clears throat> the world history here. So number 10, this one's a little tongue in cheek, is the Ass Rock. <laughs> uh, commissioned in 2007 by Japan, uh, it is a vertical launch anti-submarine rocket torpedo, and that is how we get ASROC, A-S-R-O-C, anti-submarine <laughs> rocket. It's awesome. Yeah, number that's nine. Pretty, pretty cool. Number nine is the Mark 23 Grog. Uh, 1971 oh, wow. uh, British wire guided torpedo system had a pretty short pretty short shelf life as they uh, eventually moved into things like uh, the tiger fish and things like that number I eight about the grog I don't know no one I knows. think it's a, I think it's another uh, acronym oh uh, okay something about the guidance get system I right think. Off <laughs> over on guard get right on guard get right on guys <laughs> 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 got it uh number eight is the kai 10 type one uh we uh, uh -huh. we have reviewed these before these are the japanese manned suicide torpedoes oh. kai 10 means reverse destiny okay. pretty rough, still pretty terrible rough. <laughs> yeah pretty bitter yeah <laughs> Number seven is the Tigerfish, 1979 uh, released uh, English torpedo. These are acoustic homing torpedoes, had a pretty long run. Uh, just, just the bread and butter of the uh, English Navy for a long time there. Uh, number six is the Stingray, 1983, also English made. These are lightweight acoustic homing torpedoes. These would sometimes be fired off the sides of battleships and, and things like that. So not all uh, delivered by uh, submarines. Hmm. Hmm. Number five is the Type 93, the Long Lance. The, uh, this was created, <laughs> oh. it was created in 1933 one. by the Japanese and was the most advanced torpedo of the time. Number four is the Barracuda. Uh, these were created in 2007 out of Germany. These are super, the cav yeah, super cavitating high-speed torpedoes that can reach speeds of 500 miles per hour. That's oh awesome. Oh, my word. Which is insane, which is absolutely insane. And I'm, I'm putting those as opposed to knots because I'm, I'm assuming we have some listeners out there that would – uh, understand miles per hour a little better. 500 is crazy, and just to put it in perspective, uh, a fast uh, fast torpedo in the 70s was something like the Tigerfish, and that was 50 to 60 miles per hour. So 500 is a huge jump forward. Now I have a question question for Kyle. Yeah. So if they gave you an opportunity to to ride on one of those torpedoes, <laughs> mm -hmm. would you take it? Definitely. 500 miles per hour. Oh yeah, You'd probably pass out. <laughs> I'm, you couldn't even hold on, not for a no, you're second. Str you're strapped on then. Oh, okay. Uh, it would not rip my body up, apart gonna... because I'd be underwater. Yeah. <laughs> There's so much resistance. Yeah, it'd be terrible. The super That's cavit so fast so underwater. You, so, yes, you it, would. It's a super cavitating uh, tor torpedo, which means it creates a cavity of air around it. Perfect. Uh, so uh, the way it's designed. <laughs> yeah, it creates a bubble of air yeah, around no, it. It's moving good. so fast. Well, that's a no-brainer then. Throw me on there. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> Strap me to a Barracuda. James Cameron no. was doing it, you would. <laughs> I need to do it before he does. <laughs> right, or else he's going to keep on, you know, making mm -hmm. fun of you all day long. I will be shot down to the bottom of the Marianas Trench on a Barracuda. That would be, that would probably kill you, I would assume. Well, I'm obviously, I'm going to have, I'm going to be in some kind of, uh, I'm going to have some fluid in my lungs. Yeah, and I'm going to be in a weird pod. And James Cameron's like, God damn it. I gave him all his ideas. <laughs> All right, sorry, bro. <laughs> right, it's all right. Number three is the Black Shark. I love it. These were created in 2004 by Italy. They are heavyweight fiber optic guided torpedoes. Fiber optic guided torpedoes. Fiber optic guided torpedoes, uh, as opposed to copper, copper mm. wire guided torpedoes. Number two is where we get a little, uh, a little wet and wild here. Mm. The Varunastra. 
This is Ooh. an Indian torpedo uh, created in 2016 as an anti-submarine torpedo. Varunastra is the storm weapon of the god Varuna. Ooh, now that is slick. That is, and uh, India making the list here. Good on them. Number one, though, there's a country we've failed to mention so far. I guess there's a there's there's a couple major players uh, in uh, in the world of military affairs that we have not mentioned here. But number one, come on, back to back World War Two, back to back World War champions, the United States mm-hmm. coming in here with the Mark Forty Five Mod One Freedom Torpedo. Designed oh, in 1957. Oh, yes. <laughs> <Whoa>, yes. <laughs> Designed in 1957, this anti-submarine torpedo uh, has been outfitted at various times with nuclear warheads. That's what I'm talking about, America. Yeah. Why not? <laughs> <laughs> the American way. <laughs> that is it. That is the top ten torpedoes with the most badass names. Wow, that is a great I loved list. It. So, yeah. Ben, did you – are those in any specific order to you? Yeah, they're, they're – how, how cool I kind of thought they were Okay, kind of going down the list there. I'd say Obviously, very freedom is accurate. cool. Yeah. Yeah, what would what, you guys uh, respond to? Any, any of them in particular? Or you think that's pretty uh, accurate? I like, I like Black it. Shark. I like freedom. And Black I Shark like, is sweet. Yeah. I'm oh, trying to yeah. think of some other ones. What was the 500-mile-per-hour ones called? The Barracuda. The Barracuda. That one's, yeah, that's, that one's good. Just, just I mean, a quick I guess that one's less a, name. That, I mean, it's more but that it goes 500 miles per hour <laughs> that I like. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, just a quick just recap. Badass. We had the Ass Rock, the Grog, the Kaiten, the Tigerfish, the Stingray, the Long Lance, the Barracuda, the Black Shark, the Veranostra, and the Freedom Torpedo. I will I, say I do. I did like Ass Rock because it fits really well with the theme of bad um, ass names <laughs> that you had for bad ass name <laughs> torpedoes. You see what I was doing, yeah, <laughs> but the best segment of submersion is back, folks. Folks with a vengeance, give us those sweet succulent Zach facts. Do 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 do. Zach facts, it's Zach facts. When you're going down, get some Zach facts. When you're going down, oh whoa, he's back. He's back with some facts. <laughs> with some oh. facts, he's back with those Zach facts. A new theme song. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I'm sorry for the delay, fans, but we have four Zach facts yes. for torpedo run. And here we go. So, did someone say reboot? Well, Jerry Seinfeld did. He's going to reboot. <laughs> <laughs> He's going to reboot Torpedo Run for a new Netflix special called Comedians and Subs Drinking Coffee. Oh. <laughs> did somebody say <laughs> Jamie lost it like as soon as you said yeah. it. <laughs> I think it was Jerry Seinfeld. Jer- Jerry Seinfeld. <laughs> Did somebody say Jerry Seinfeld? <laughs> no. Oh, what about reboot? Mm, maybe. <laughs> Can't wait for that, man. Yeah. I know it's gonna be. It's gonna be great. That would uh, actually be a show. I'd be surprised if James Cameron did. Yeah, it's true. <laughs> Taking him around like to explore. I'd, I'd do that one. Oh yeah. <laughs> if James Cameron was doing it, I'd probably trust him. If you guys were doing it, get out of here. Oh, come on. <laughs> we, we could have a good time. Yeah, but we would immediately sink that submarine because we don't have to use one. <laughs> well, not if we all participate in the new VR game. Oh, that's um, true. Oh, what's it called? Got Iron Wolf. Oh, yes. Is this yes. a Zach fact? I, right? Didn't, didn't I, wasn't I texting you about that? <laughs> yes, you did. No, yeah, that's it's, not a Zach fact. This is a, this is a Oculus Rift game, right? Yeah, it just came out. It was released one or two weeks ago. Um, a brand new VR game. It's you with two, three, or four other of your friends manning a submarine. Oh my God. Going against <laughs> other submarines. It looks badass. And and what are the odds? I know. What are it's, the odds? It's like each person playing in the VR, like you, you know, you all have your own controls. It's kind of like they have, there's like a Star Trek game where you know, like everyone has their station. That's what this is, except everyone has their station on a submarine and you're attacking other subs. It looks awesome. That is great. What a time to be alive. 
Yeah. I'm still thinking of getting it and we can do like a formal review on it or something. It'd be awesome. That'd be really fun. Like Anyways, world, world of on. tanks, but yeah. world of subs. World of subs. They even had a, uh, oh shoot, it was like an April Fool's thing where they were going to introduce subs into world of tanks or uh, <laughs> one of those other games, War Thunder or something. That's not funny. I know. I was that's like, not, wait, wait, what? Let's start playing now. All right, All right, fact number two. Glenn Ford lived to be 90 years old, he which did. is the average life of someone sometimes on a submarine. Wow. That's some hardcore truth right there. It's a fact, guys. Um, Ernie Borgnine actually uh, lived in 95. Yeah, he lived longer. <laughs> uh, well, yeah. We got tomato, <laughs> tomato. You got, a- <laughs> that's what he said, <laughs> average. <laughs> Um, so when this movie came out in 1958, the, um, what they were, they were promoting the film Cheetos, Cheetos, or we, we, you know what Cheetos are, the snack food. They came out in 1948, but in 1958, Cheetos came up with the Torpedo Cheetos, oh. <laughs> which were shaped I'd- like submarines, except lumpy and crunchy. I <laughs> would buy them. I would a hundred percent. <laughs> you guys got those torpedo Cheetos? Oh yeah! It'd be like better if they were uh, straight. If they were just periscope shape and it's just basic bag of Cheetos. <laughs> <laughs> just slap also, a name on it. Yeah, I also don't know what Cheetos are. Could you describe them in detail to me? They go. They complement popcorn very well. I got I'll, it. I'll give you that. <laughs> I understand. <laughs> <laughs> it's all there's tough. a movie theater. There's a movie theater I go to up north, um, and they have like official Cheetos popcorn and that shit's bananas except really? Cheetos and popcorn. Yeah, I was saying, they're not, <laughs> it's not bananas. Just to be clear. They're actually, it's not a bag of bananas. This is actually Cheetos popcorn. It's, it's, it's really it's good It's bananas, though. Cheetos, popcorn. Right. I'm going to have some this Friday because I'm going to see A Star is Born and I'm going to get some. Ooh. Interesting movie choice. Oh, I can't to, wait for it. It's supposed to be really good. I'm, See, really? I'm geeking yeah. hard on the song Shallow that was just released on Thursday. So... That's uh, Brad Cooper and Lady Gaga, right? Oh, Lady, gotcha. Lady Gaga, yeah. <laughs> Anyways, um, last the last fact. Torpedo Run. It was. I know Jamie. You said it was nominated for what Oscar earlier? A visual effects. Well, that um, that's actually wrong. It oh. was nominated for best original song titled uh. "Torpedo Run, Run, Run My Heart Away." Oh, wow. I do remember that one. Yes, who doesn't remember that classic? <laughs> By <laughs> yeah, by yes, <laughs> right. You guys have a little different uh, dialect, but yes, about <laughs> pretty much the same thing. Right. Well, Kyle, you know Just it, right? A bunch of consonants. Oh yeah, sing us a little bit, real quick. <laughs> Torpedo, run, 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 my heart away. Run, run, run. <laughs> da, 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 run my heart away. Run, I'm run, actually surprised. <laughs> I'm actually surprised you remember the title that he said. <laughs> <laughs> I, was saying, I, got, I got one more fact for you guys, and it's a true fact. Yeah. This may be the first episode ever where I didn't make a joke about I thought someone about pulling their. Thanks for listening to Submersion. Find us on SoundCloud and follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Can't get enough of us? Don't forget to subscribe for new episodes every Thursday. And if you like what you heard, please go ahead and give us a rating. Okay. Yeah, I think that's about right. I just want to make sure I got my sounds on. You don't need that. I know, but I just need to make sure my sound. (laughs) Yeah, man. I'll say, can you see by the dawn? Is this this something new we're doing every time? (laughs) Yeah, you've been out out of it for too long. (laughs) (laughs)